Hey everyone. Okay, I'm just doing a little bit of housekeeping, making sure that people that asked me to make sure they're included the next time I do a live video, um, so I need to go through. I wish there was just a, a way to make a group that I just tag all in. <laughs> um, and then that way everybody that wants to make sure that they're invited and know that I'm on uh, has been notified. But so far Facebook hasn't done that. Um, so I need to go through individually and tag people. And then I'm always afraid I'm gonna miss someone. Uh, so I always wanna make sure I go through the entire list. So I am so sorry that in the beginning of these live videos, I'm kind of distracted and doing the housekeeping. Um, but I'm almost finished, guys. And I've got a great card for everyone tonight. I'm really excited. Um, as you know, I'm a Stamping Up demonstrator. And as, as being a demonstrator, I have access to a bunch of other demonstrators that have been doing this for a very long time. All right, I'm finished with that that have been doing this for a very long time, so I get to um, learn a lot of really cool things from them. And, um, you know, in my true Kathleenisms, I wanna uh, pass on what I learn. So um, I hope that I inspire people. Um, again, as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I have uh, products available to you. Tonight's um, card, I really don't use a lot of Stampin' Up! products. Um, however, I, I can definitely come up with a way to incorporate um, the stamp sets and stuff, but I tried to make this one a little bit quick and easy. Um, so we're going to do what's called a Z fold card. Okay, so, and it opens like that. And I did some mild embellishments. I didn't do anything really elaborate. This way um, you're not intimidated. I think sometimes people get intimidated when they're watching a video or learning something and it's a little bit elaborate and it makes it a little bit, um, you know, scary for them to try. Well, um, my goal tonight is to show you something simple that's super cute, um, easy, and looks like you've put a lot more time into it than what you did. This card here that I'm using as my sample, um, let me try to fix that lighting so there's not so much of a glare. Okay, so this card that I did as a sample, it only took me five minutes. Granted, I wasn't on camera, I wasn't trying to explain how to do it, but it only took five minutes and I did, um, do a group of four. I got things ready for a group of four and to do a group of four you need um, four pieces of your uh, eight and a half by eleven cardstock and two pieces of twelve by twelve cardstock and then just some cutaways from your um, paper pad that you're using and if you're not using a paper pad and you want to use stamping up products the designer series paper everything with stamping up seems to coordinate. The colors coordinate, the patterns of the papers coordinate with the stamp sets. They've done a great job with all of that and that's what I love about them. And as I become more and more um, uh, engaged with their products, I will be incorporating them more into our Kathleen's Craft Corners. So let's um, turn the camera down to the work table and learn how to make this card. All right. I'm hoping that this is good and we redid the lighting and the um, craft studio here so I want to make sure that you can see everything all right so for this card we're going to need some plain cardstock and you can coordinate your cardstock with whatever designer paper that you're going to use and embellishments it doesn't always have to be white I'm choosing to use white and I have an eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. And then I have a eight and a half by two inch piece of cardstock. And that's what the base of our card's gonna be made out of. And then in addition to that, I have a four, uh, 
five and a quarter by four inch piece of designer paper, a two pieces that are different, and you don't have to do them different. You can do this any way you want, but I have two that are different that are one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths, one that's four by one and seven eighths, one that's five and a quarter by one and seven eighths, and a second one of five and a quarter by one and seven eighths. And we're gonna get to those in just a second. So the first thing we wanna do is, oh, these are my embellishments that I'm gonna use. First thing we wanna do is get our, um, our cardstock, our base cardstock scored. And for that, I use a scoreboard. However, if you don't have a scoreboard, you can take your ruler and measure in the first um, the first place that I'm going to score is at two and one eight. So if you want to do it with a ruler, find the edge of your paper, line it up, and then go to two and one eighths and make three dots, and then go align those dots with your ruler so that you have a nice straight line. But if you have a chance to invest in one of these scoreboards, um, I love it. Mine's a Martha Stewart one. Stampin' Up! has one. Um, we Are Memory Keepers, I believe, also has one. And they're not, they're, they're around $20-ish, $20 to $30, depending on what one you have. And I really want to get the Stampin' Up! one because it has... Um, little uh, markers up at the top where you can actually put like if you're doing a, a batch of cards or a batch of any type of project like my bags that I make um, you can put your markers at the places where you're going to do your scoring so you don't have to just rely on your memory and I'm getting old <laughs> my memory's not all that good however I do remember the marks for this one so we're going to score our first line at two and one eighth And then our second line at four and a quarter. So you'll notice four and a quarter is midway through your eight and a half, and two and one eighth is midway through your four and a quarter. So that's where that um, Z fold's gonna come. And now you're gonna take your eight and a half by two inch piece of cardstock and you're gonna score them in the same place, but then you're gonna flip it around. So you're at two and one eighth and four and a quarter. And this is gonna go this way on your card. All right, so let's get this scoreboard put away because that's all the scoring that we need to do. All right, so we're gonna take our uh, five and a half by eight and a half and we're gonna fold on those scores. So we're gonna fold it that four and one quarter score first. All right, get it aligned. And then I like to take my bone folder and make sure that fold is nice and crisp. Okay, and then our two and one eighth score, we're gonna fold backwards. Okay, get that aligned. And then we're gonna use our bone folder, make sure it's nice and crisp, okay. So this is the first part of your card. And now we're gonna do the same thing um, with our smaller piece. So you're gonna fold it in half, fold it that four and one fourth line. Make sure we use the bone folder and get that fold nice and crisp. Now, you'll notice that that's on the front and I have the smaller one on the back. It's because you're gonna have this flipped. All right, so, and actually, I need to flip it that way. <laughs> All right, I remembered the uh, the right marks, but just the wrong way. All right, so then you've got your um, four and a quarter fold folded, and then you're gonna go back and do your two and one eighth fold. Make sure that you're lining all your edges up because sometimes your score can just be a hair off and that makes everything off. All right, so let's get the bone folder and make that nice and crisp. So essentially what's gonna happen is this will get attached there and that'll get attached there and then it opens like that, see? 
All right, so before you attach it though, you want to decorate it um, with your designer paper. So what I chose to do, I'm kind of doing a, a black and white um, uh, series of cards here. One, I'm doing this one on camera with you. I've already done the one sample one, and I'll probably put some extra embellishments on it. I've got some um, some black gems that I can put on it. I'm going to make maybe a gold butterfly, have that flying on there, because I like everything to be um, kind of dimensional. And then I'm going to do a cutout and put, stamp a nice little greeting inside the card. So, um, but you can decorate your cards however you want. If you don't want to make embellishments and you want to buy embellishments, there's tons of them out there. If you don't want to do that um, and you just want to do some of your own pictures, I, I sell cards at Lisa's Pieces in downtown Newport Ritchie and um, I have very uh, three-dimensional type cards that I sell, but there's one lady there that she also sells cards, but they're all hand painted and they're beautiful. So this is one of those um, layouts that whatever you want to embellish it with, whether it's something that you hand paint, um, embellishments that you buy, embellishments that you make, um, you can do tons and tons of stuff with this. But in the end, it just, it's so nice because it, it's such a different card. It doesn't just open up like a book. It, it has this nice fold to it. All right, so I've got my designer paper here and I'm going to, I'm choosing to use wet glue to lay this down. Some of the people that I've seen do these cards, um, they use a double-sided tape. But the reason I like to use the wet glue is because Everything that I cut out, I'm trying to get a little eighth of an inch uh, border around it. And with the wet glue, you have just a little bit of wiggle room when you lay it down. When you use your double-sided tape, and I love my double-sided tape, um, you, there's no room for error. Once you put it down, that's it. I've been lucky a few times I've been able to uh, get it up, but a lot of people don't like to use the wet glue um, when they're making cards because it tends to buckle the paper and um, I've learned not to use a lot. A little goes a long way. And this wet glue that I use, the um, Art Glitter Glue, man, I tell you, it's got the best results of any other wet glue that I've used. So what I do is just put a nice thin line around the edge and then we're gonna lay that right here and try to center it as best as I can, and I think I got it. Okay, and then I use my bone folder to really mash that glue in, let it spread out nice and thin. And then this way, the way I do it, I don't get any buckling from the glue. All right, so then I'm gonna use my next piece. This is uh, five and a quarter by one and seven eighths. And I do the same thing. I'm gonna put just a nice little thin bead right around the edge. Get it centered as best as I can. Okay. Use my bone folder and really mush that glue in. It's funny, when I first started doing uh, paper crafts, I would watch a lot of videos and everybody in the videos, oh, it's so important to do with the bone folder. And I'm like, well, you're just pressing it down. Let me tell you, these bone folders, I don't know how I've lived <laughs> without them. Um, I use them for everything. I, I open my mail with them. <laughs> All right, so putting my last piece of five and a quarter by one and seven eighths. Again, nice thin piece of a uh, bead of glue. And then we're gonna get that right here. Centered best I can, making sure everything lines up. All right. Looking good. Okay, so that's this piece. And see, that's kind of nice even without having anything. You can just put an embellishment on it, something a little bit different. But we're not stopping there. We're going to get this part covered as well. 
Now this piece is one and seven eighths by four inches. I'm going to glue this right in here. Try and center it the best I can. Okay. And you'll notice I'm going back and forth so each each thing's just a little bit different because I want that nice contrast. And that's one of the things um Stampin' Up! does uh, that's so nice when you buy any of their designer series paper with them. You always get con contrasting papers in the paper pack. It's the same as like if you went to Michael's and you got the Hot Buy tablets. And to be honest with you, there's not all that much of a difference in price. Um, I, I know that it looks like the designer series paper is a lot more expensive, but the Hot Buy tablets, unless you're getting them on sale, they're just as expensive as any place else. Um, I do get a lot of my hot buy tablets at Michael's on sale though, and, uh, I have tons and tons of paper, but I do tons and tons of stuff, so <laughs> I need it. All right, so this is our last piece of designer paper, and, um, this again is one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. Thin bead around the edge. And I think I want that flower going that way on this. All right, get that centered. There we go. Smush that down. All right, now here's where the magic happens. All right, so you're gonna put your long end of the small piece and your short end of the large piece, and you're gonna lock them together. And then your short end of your small piece with your long end of your large piece and lock them together. And that's where that Z fold comes from. All right, so what I do is I go about from the edge and about an inch in, and I cover that whole little section with some glue because you don't want it popping off. And people tend to play with cards that have any kind of movement in it. So you wanna make sure that when you're attaching it, you're getting it adhered well. So I'm a little bit more generous with the glue that way because it's already thick and you're not gonna get the buckling. All right, so that's attached there. And then we're gonna put some glue on this small end. And I do the same thing, just about an inch in. And I fill it in, I'm generous with it. And I attach that to this corner here. Make sure everything's lined up. That's important when you're making cards. You don't want it to look cockeyed or, excuse the expression, half-assed. Make sure everything lines up really nice, okay? All right, and there we go. That's our Z-Fold card. Now what I've chosen to do, I've, I've seen people that put some decorations behind here so that they're like pop-ups and I've got some really um, cute ideas that I'm gonna do for Christmas with that. But um, what I've chosen to do with some of these cards is I'm trying to, I don't know, I know I've mentioned her name before, but um, Sherry, she goes by the Posh Paper Lady. Um, I get a lot of encouragement from her, a lot of great ideas. And this week she did a whole series on using your cutaways. And these cutaways that we um, have in the paper pads, uh, especially these ones from Michaels or Joanne Fabrics or anything, a lot of times they end up getting wasted. But she did a whole series on different things that you can do with them. So I thought, well, I'm going to kind of incorporate that into um, my Z Fold card and I'm going to make my embellishment out of one of the cutaways from the paper pad that I'm using to um, decorate my card with. So I cut a, a piece of um, gold card stock to put on the back to give it a little bit of decoration. It matches the gold in my card here. And I'm gonna, I have my cutaway, it says be kind. Be kind, that, what a message for everybody right now. It's, it's a crazy time we're living in and I just think people need to stop, breathe and just be nice, be nice to one another. All right, so we're gonna take my be kind and I'm going to glue that to my gold piece. Get that centered in here. Now, this gold cardstock, if your glue runs out, 
Let's see if I have any glue that's going to run out. Oh, right here. So if your glue runs out, all you do is take your finger and rub it until it comes off and it doesn't mess up the shine or anything. I love this gold cardstock. And I, I think this was from Stampin' Up, this gold cardstock. All right, so I'm just rubbing off my extra glue. And then what I'm going to do is, see this L? And I want to center this into my card as, as well as I can. So on the back, I'm just going to put glue in a backwards L. And I'm just going to zigzag my way down. And then zigzag my way across, you know, maybe a half inch or so. And then I'm going to take my card, make sure everything's closed up, and I'm going to center this right in the center of my card. All right. There we go. That looks good. My bone folder, press it down. And there we go. Here's our Z Fold card. All right. Well, See, it wasn't scary, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So I wanna thank everyone that stopped by and um, watched me make some cards. I hope I inspire you to make some cards. And if you don't feel like making cards, please stop by Lisa's Pieces in downtown Newport Ritchie, ask her where the cards for Crafts by Kathleen is, and you can buy some that I've already made. It was great spending my Friday evening with you and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.